Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hi, welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is The Cube. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We're here at the HP Big Data Conference 2015. Andrea Fabrizi is here. He's with the analytics team within the CMS business, the communications media solutions business at HP. We've had Sargalai on many, many times. Mm -hmm. Andrea, welcome to theCUBE, it's great to have you. Thank you for So talk about me. your role inside of uh, the C HP CMS business. Yeah, uh, inside CMS business, I'm responsible for uh, uh, creating and managing all the big data and analytics uh, portfolio for telecommunication market. So my responsibility is to uh, using the HP product like uh, uh, IDOL, Vertica, Autonomy, and creating solutions specific for telecommunication market. And obviously uh, managing the go-to-market and uh, the support activity. So this is really important. I mean, we've observed in Wikibon that our research shows that, that most analytic initiatives are very highly customized. Correct. Um, and complicated and expensive and time consuming. And there's a demand, and I think a trend, to take analytics capabilities and package them inside of apps, you know, packaged apps, specifically by industry. You have templates, and it sounds like that's what you guys are doing within the CMS organization. Is that correct? And can you talk a little bit more yeah, about the absolutely. strategy? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly what we do. I mean, uh, uh, telecommunication market uh, has adopted big data, also because they have a huge quantity of data, uh, quite recently, and uh, the first activity they do was uh, roughly to load this data on the big data lake. Uh, but now for them, the big uh, challenge is to understand how to use this data in an efficient way, how to create uh, uh, the application they needed. And this is where we play. So uh, we play the role in uh, identify what are the typical problem uh, that analytics can solve for telecommunication industry. Let me do an example. Uh, we are very active on um, defining and helping to do real-time personalized marketing. So uh, managing the possibility to interact with the subscriber in a real-time, basing it maybe with the, where the subscriber are. So if they are in a specific place, they continue to do specific offer. And this offer has to be personalized. So uh, telecommunication market, uh, it's looking for uh, a new marketing that is not only a mass market, but is also a marketing basing on what your real preference, what you really want, rather than uh, what product I have to sell. And uh, this is one of the top topics for telecommunication, uh, improving uh, the relationship with subscriber through the analytics. Uh, another of topics for them is using uh, analytics uh, to be and big data to be more efficient in, uh, in their network uh, uh, management. Their network is very complicated, and moreover, now they have provided service by themselves. The network is used by OTT to provide additional service, uh, um, and all the people consider. Uh, the telcos as responsible for over the service. So if you have a problem with Facebook, uh, you don't call Facebook uh, call center, you call the, your telco environment. So the telco have to expand the capability to diagnostic on the network, also including such kind of services. And this is an uh, important area for them uh, of analysis. Well, it's interesting, because on the one hand, there's a big threat. The Facebooks and the WhatsApps and the yeah. Skypes, you know, over the top providers, um, the big threat to the telco industry, but the s second hand, they have visibility on everything, so they have a huge opportunity. So your strategy is to try to give them better visibility so that they can take action on that. I want to come back to, you, you mentioned real time. Yeah. Um, everybody talks about real time. How do you look at real time? What is the definition of real time? Is it before you lose the customer? Is it really in real time? What, what now, that's mean? a good question, because generally uh, on the real time, there is a lot of this, oh, people in, intend real time is a different way. Uh, when we talk in real time, uh, we dis we're talking about uh, having analytic capability below one second. So in real time means really the possibility to identify below one second a problem and raise the right alarm to 
and managing also the resolution in a short term. So in the telco space, uh, so I mean, uh, in other market, uh, real time means uh, probably three minutes, five minutes. Uh, I, you can read a lot of uh, in memory database that say we are real time or whatever. They are fast, but when you're talking about the real time in the telco, real time in the network means below one second. And this is the target they are looking for, especially on managing the network, because I mean, if you have a problem on your device, uh, you don't want to wait uh, three minutes for a resolution or that the customer can be informed in three minutes. You want to know immediately. You want to be connected immediately. That's the, the expert. Last time I had Sar on, Sar Gilai, was at HP Discover in June. Mm -hmm. I guess, it, yeah, it was June. He gave me a little lesson on NFV. Yeah. Um, you are involved in analytics as it relates to NFV. So what's mm -hmm. the relationship between analytics and NFV and how is it affecting positive change in the mm -hmm. telco industry? Yeah, now that's a very good question because analytics is now uh, a very uh, important topic for a telecommunication operator. They see in, analyt in, uh, sorry, in NFV, they see a great opportunity to uh, move uh, in a more cost-effective platform and at the same time have uh, the level of flexibility to manage a new service in a very fast way. Uh, but analytics play an important role in NFE because uh, uh, the environment NFE will be much more complex than actual environment. So you can imagine that now you have uh, all the function in a box, uh, in a group of box, Tomorrow with NFE, you have uh, this function spread out several computers, several virtual machines. That will be a benefit for them because they can uh, scale in, scale out more efficiently. They can use standard machine. But at the same time, so the complexity of managing all this infrastructure, which much more comp complicated. And here, analytics can play a fundamental role to help Telco to manage the complexity of NFE environment in a real-time way. So analytics can introduce uh, the intelligence uh, in the NFE environment uh, to understand when they need to s adding a virtual machine because this function is starting to be overloaded or when they're thinking, okay, we're observing a strange trend uh, on this service, maybe we can add in resources or we can start. So the analytics can uh, be the intelligence of the NFE. That's the message. That, that, we and the, and the, the, the business outcome there is automation, lower exactly. cost. Okay. And then the other sort of note uh, I would take or make is that it seems like NFV, the state of NFV today is very much sort of the, the hardware layer focused, you know, dealing with that sort mm -hmm. of hardware virtualization, if you will. There's a real opportunity for software management. Do analytics play there as well? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly the point. I mean. Uh, there are several steps. I mean, analytics sure can uh, uh, support uh, on the hardware level to uh, the hardware. Let me say the virtual virtual level to help to improve uh, the uh, capability of managing in real time. So imagine that NFE is a big cloud, and you need uh, a capability to manage this cloud uh, more efficient way. But also on the software, and especially on the software defined network. Uh, analytics uh, play an important role because uh, all these, uh, uh, the managing, the, 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 the great stuff is that now all the network can be virtualized, uh, not only in terms of uh, hardware, but in terms of function. So you can decide that uh, um, a packet can be routed uh, through different system rather than other. And again, here there is uh, an intelligence to define uh, the best uh, route for the traffic that analytic can provide. So. Does the Aruba acquisition change anything? Does it open up new opportunities for you? Um, I mean, we are, uh, I mean, from a communication point of view, we are evaluating uh, very deeply the acquisition with Aruba, especially in the direction we are observing on the market to use Wi-Fi location capability. I mean, uh, uh, Wi-Fi is playing a very important role in uh, now nowadays uh, for anyone, I mean, uh, anyone is uh, always Wi-Fi connected or almost always. And uh, using this information to support uh, making uh, your service better for the scrub is great. So, I mean, Wi-Fi allow you to have a more precise information about uh, your location. So GPS give you a precision of, let me say, 50 meters or something like that. Uh, radio networks uh, do the same, depending 
uh, Wi-Fi can uh, really give you a precision between uh, 1 meter to 10 meter depending on the technology used and this is can be really change the game so imagine how many services you can provide uh, using uh, location information with so precision and that's open a new for example marketing as a new perspective for this and we are t working with Aruba about that direction to uh, use Wi-Fi technology for uh, location capability and that'll rip it through to your customers who can offer more services exactly. more precise targeting what's the you, you mentioned idle vertica you know idle autonomy vertica we talked about Aruba what's the what are the piece parts that you're pulling together from HP to build the solutions yeah. Obviously, the, the main part we put together are um, Vertica as an analytic database that is extremely powerful in conjunction with Hadoop because obviously Hadoop is a, an important piece of the, the solution. And we're using IDOL to manage uh, all the correlation and analysis on uh, unstructured information. So that's are the three main uh, component. Uh, Aruba plays uh, uh, an important role for providing the capability to adding additional information. It's more like me say, uh, IDOL and Vertica are the engines, uh, Aruba as other component in the network are the data sources. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the play role of these uh, solutions. Andrea, um, you're from overseas, you're from, from Italy. Mm -hmm. um, telco diversity, I want to ask you about sort of differences yeah, between what's happening in sort of the U.S. world versus what's happening in uh, across the world. So you're, you're Europe, a APAC, maybe even within Japan itself, which yeah. has its own, own little ecosystem. How stark are the differences in telcos? And, and, well, and, and then specifically as it relates to data. I, my responsibility is worldwide, so I follow yeah. this market for uh, the world HP on uh, all the, the continent. Uh, and yes, I'm observing uh, several different uh, differences uh, on the market, especially between uh, Asia, Europe, and America. Uh, Japan is more, I think, is more, this, now it's similar in some behavior to US. Mm -hmm. uh, let me explain. Uh, Asia now is, uh, they have uh, a big growth in terms of number of subscribers uh, in the last past. So, uh, Recently, they, their focus was just adding network capability to support uh, growing uh, customer base. Now, most part of Asia is uh, reaching the saturation level. I mean, the penetration level for the scribe is very high, not at the level of US, but I mean, we're talking about 70%, uh, 80%. So now they are moving to uh, customer experience management solution. So they are looking to how to increase the quality of the network, uh, to um, managing the loyalty of the customer. And from the analytic point of view, uh, we are selling a lot of uh, customer experience management solutions. So solution, analytics solution, big data, collecting big data to manage better the network, uh, to manage better the subscriber. Um, the similar experience is uh, um, in, in Europe. We have uh, uh, Europe, uh, from one side is in, in there is a, a trend, a trend to improve the, uh, let me say, the, um, the experience of the customer. But Europe seems more interesting uh, in uh, managing um, loyalty. So churn management solution, understanding uh, why the customer leave the company and how to block these aspects. So the improvement of the service is part of this story, but uh, more on uh, this aspect. Japan and America are more uh, focusing on um, marketing so um, it's very in, in, in America all the telco are looking at the marketing capabilities of big data to uh, support much more uh, marketing understanding better the subscriber also the legislation help in that direction because the privacy legislation is different but generally speaking uh, American company are willing to invest much more on uh, new technology and uh, using uh, use this new technology to improve marketing capability. And how about other parts of the world? How about China? Let's talk about China a little bit. Um, uh, maybe well, South America, Africa? Yes, yeah, South America, it's uh, similar to, uh, from this point of view, to uh, like in Asia. Mm -hmm. So they are looking to big data mostly for improving uh, uh, customer quality Service, yeah. services. Uh, China is, uh, uh, is a very interesting market. In China, we're observing uh, 
all the uh, effect together. So from one side, uh, they are still growing in terms of subscribers, so they are spending a lot of money in network uh, enhancement, whatever. But we are observing a, a lot of project, uh, both in customer quality, but also in the marketing. So we are observing a, a, a lot of uh, activity around uh, using big data for marketing purpose uh, to improve the um, the market selling new stuff uh, to the customer. And how about Africa? I mean. It's still early days, but yeah. and you, you had all kinds of you know political unrest. But it, it's, but it seems like just from the standpoint of population mm -hmm. uh, and you know size of the the, the geography is just should, in theory should be huge opportunities yeah. for telcos. But, but that's it's unstable true. in certain parts I mean, and Africa, uncertain. Africa is very. I think is a. Uh, uh, from telco point of view, is really uh, a new frontier because yep. it's an area where all the telco in Africa are growing a lot. Uh, in this moment, they are growing mostly in uh, from I mean, from network point of view. So they expand the network to cover the uh, the subscription growing. So Africa is like uh, Asia probably five years, ten years ago. So an area where the penetration is really low and uh, the main effort and the main direction of any telco is uh, expanding the coverage, expanding so to get the new subscriber. So uh, from the analytic point of view, let me say Africa is still uh, uh, a frontier that probably will be explored in uh, probably five years from and, now. And, and go back to China, so you, HP recently divested and d developed a sort of partnership mm -hmm. with uh, an operation in China, you sort of restructured that yeah. whole situation where the partner has a majority ownership. You still maintain, I mm -hmm. think, ownership. Um, how does that affect your business at all? Well, we uh, it was mostly uh, oriented on the network side, but uh, this hasn't a big impact yeah. on okay. on our business. So we continue to have a very good grow in in China, very good business uh, uh, on all the aspects. I mean, uh, analytic, NFE. Uh, they are very active also on uh, NFE. They're doing several POC, so all the telco are experimenting NFE technology. So in the United States, we're always using baseball analogies, but we use a we use a, a soccer, if I can use that term, yeah. a football analogy, right? So we say, oh, what inning are we in? When you think about analytics in telco, mm -hmm. what part of the game are we in? Are we in the first half? Are we in the second half? Are we in extra time? <laughs> Where are we? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think that we have in. Uh, uh, I want to say in the middle, mm -hmm. because um, I think that the first half, using the soccer example, yeah. I'm not a big, uh, uh, an expert on baseball. <laughs> I mean, uh, the first quarter in the baseball has gone. I mean, the first quarter was dedicated to collect and store the data. So that's what the data does. So uh, they was uh, anxious to say, okay, we have so many data, we have so many sources, why we don't collect this data, whatever, internet, uh, uh, any services. Now, the second half uh, is more important because now the real challenge for them is to leverage this data. So they have an amazing quantity of data. So you can imagine, uh, we have project with several petabytes of data that is really a uh, huge quantity of data. Now for them is the real jump, uh, the second half or next part of the game is to really leverage this data. Mm -hmm. because. They do some uh, experience, uh, they try to monetize like Google, but they they are not Google. They try, they try to understand really where, how to use this data. Because they try to, I don't know, most of them try to explore a Google approach model to monitor the data, but that's not their business. And now they are looking to the big data and particular analytics to improve, uh, to automate their process. And I think this is the right direction. So really the data they have as a level of granularity that they will allow to improve uh, their process. And I'm not only referring to uh, network or IT process, but I refer in marketing process too. So they can really be very effective and using uh, this information also to create a new business model with their partner using the data. Excellent, we'll have to leave it there, Andrea. Thanks very much for coming on. Okay, uh, the CMS business unit really going after new opportunities uh, within the telco industry. 
Really appreciate your insights. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. With You're welcome. Pleasure. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back after this short break. This is theCUBE. We're live from HP Big Data 2015 in Boston. Right back. Thank you.